So uh, spanning tree protocol, if you talk about the spanning tree protocol, it is IEEE standard. So IEEE Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineering. So they came up with the idea of I, uh, the STP. So IEEE standard 802.1D is defined as the spanning tree protocol. So spanning tree protocol, it prevents the loop. The spanning tree protocol, it is going to prevent the loops in the network by putting one particular port of the switch either in the forwarding state or in the blocking state. So when we connect multiple switches or there is only a single switch doesn't even matter, STP will always be running. So STP will carefully analyze the topology and it will decide whether it has to put a particular port into the forwarding state or it has to put the port into the blocking state. Now, if the port is in forwarding state, it will keep sending the data as usual normally. But if the port is in blocking state, that, that port will stop sending the data and stop receiving the data until STP decides to put that interface in the forwarding state as well. Okay, so the port which is in the blocking state can only, uh, you know, receive the STP messages. Other than that, it is not going to send or receive any kind of data. Okay, now STP protocol, the spanning tree protocol is by default running on the Cisco devices. We can disable the STP if we want, but uh, you know, it's not, it's not recommended that you disable the spanning tree protocol. Now, how it works actually, how the STP works. So STP spanning tree protocol, it, it, it works on a spanning tree algorithm. The spanning tree algorithm helps the STP in creating a tree type structure. In a tree type structure, there will be a root switch, a main switch, and all the other switches are more like what we can say like branches and something like that. So STP creates a tree type structure of the loop free uh, leaves and branches. So it, it, there will be a root and all the other switches can be considered as the branches. Now uh, STP was created before this LAN switches were existed. So uh, when the bridge technology came, uh, the, uh, the STP was created at that time. So STP is actually uh, created before the modern LAN switches uh, that we use nowadays uh, were basically designed. So consider the term switch and bridge. These two terms, we, uh, they, they can be used synonymously in terms of STP. Okay, so whenever you uh, hear the term bridge, uh, consider that term as switch. The, the, they changed the technology, but the terminology remained same. Okay, now STP ensures that if there is a complex topology of one, two, three, four, five, let's say there is a complex topology like this, where there are redundant paths, redundant links, so chances of loop might, loop might be there. So STP ensures that there will only be one path from a particular switch to the other switch. So STP will carefully analyze that switch network and it will make sure that there is only one path active to reach to all the other switches like this or it could be like, sorry, it could be like, like this. It could be like anything. So there should be, there will be a root, there will be a main switch, the root switch and all the other switches are known as non-root switch or non-root bridge. And STP will ensure that there is only a single path to reach to every destination switch. And any, if there are multiple paths, in that case, STP is going to uh, block the appropriate ports to avoid any kind of possible loops. Okay. So first of all, how the spanning tree algorithm is designed, first of all, there will be an election of something called root bridge. Now root bridge or root switch, we discussed like bridge and switch is a synonymous term in case of spanning tree protocol. 
So whenever you hear the term bridge and consider it a switch. So first of all, what will happen that uh, the spanning tree algorithm is going to choose a reference point of the network. And by reference point of the network means it is going to choose the best switch of the network based on the some criteria. Okay. Once that best point of the network is chosen, that best point, that reference point is known as the root bridge. So what is the root bridge? Root bridge is the reference point of the network. Once all the other switches, all the other switches, they are known as non-root bridge. So root bridge is the main switch of the network and all the remaining switches, they are known as non-root bridge. Now, how root bridge election happens? How root bridge election happens? So root bridge election happens based on something called bridge ID. Every bridge in the Swiss network every bridge will have a bridge id every bridge bridge or switch whichever you prefer so every bridge in the network will have a bridge id so what is bridge id bridge id is used to identify the bridge in the switched network and a bridge id is used to select the reference point of the switched network now Every switch will have the bridge ID. How that and that bridge ID is automatically derived. How that bridge ID is automatically derived. Bridge ID is a combination of two things. One is bridge priority. And second one is the bridge MAC address. So bridge ID is a composition of two things. One is bridge priority, which is a two byte field and bridge MAC address which is going to be 6 bytes long. So total bridge ID is an 8 byte value. 8 byte value which is a combination of bridge priority and bridge MAC address. You already know about the MAC address. So every switch will have some base MAC address. That base MAC address is chosen as the bridge MAC address and the bridge priority. It is 2 bytes field. 2 bytes basically means 16 bits and using the 16 bits the smallest number that we can get is 0 and the largest number that we can get is 65535. So this priority is a number from 0 to 65535. By default this bridge priority is set to be 32768 on all the switches. So it will be 32768. 32768 and 32768. Then the MAC address. Let's say the MAC address is A, the MAC address is B, and let's say the MAC address is C. You already know the format of the MAC address, so I'm not going to write down the entire MAC address. So let's consider 32768.A, 32768.B, 32768.C. It is how bridge ID is represented in the switches. Now, let me be very clear. It's not how the switch will see the bridge ID. It is how we will see the bridge ID for our, our understanding. So when we do the verification command, we will see what is the bridge priority, what is the bridge MAC address. But when it comes to the switch for, you know, internal uses, when it decides like what is my bridge ID. So remember that this number is also converted into the hexadecimal format. Why? Because you know the MAC address is in hexadecimal format. So it's not like this is decimal, then it is hexadecimal. Uh, it's not like the switch will understand in this format. It will convert this number into hexadecimal format as well. And I believe it will come to be 8000. If you try, I think it will come to be 8000. And then uh, the, the MAC address, the whatever MAC address is there. So 8000.b, 8000.c, 8000. A uh, in hexadecimal. So switch will understand it in hexadecimal format. But if we want to change the priority to change our reference point, in that case, we have to set the priority in the decimal format. We will see that. Now, lowest bridge ID is always preferred. So whichever device among three, among these three, 
one was having the bris id of 32768.a second was having 32768.b and the third is having 32768.c in that case whichever bris id among these is the lowest one that switch is considered as the best switch of the network that is considered as the reference point of the network or that is considered as the root bridge of the network and all the remaining they are going to be considered as non root bridge okay so in a swiss network if there is 1 2 3 4 doesn't matter how many number of switches you have connected in whatever fashion you want to connect every switch will have some mac address every switch will have some mac address a b c d every switch will have some bris id which is a combination of priority and mac address priority by default it is same on all the switches so priority mac address priority mac address then the lowest one is going to be chosen as the root bridge and all the remaining one non root bridge non root bridge and non root bridge so once the reference point is selected the stp can proceed with the remaining points